lot of people ask you, well, oh my God, climate change, where do I move? You know, <laughs> I don't want to move off the coastline. How far inland do I have to move? It was a question I got yesterday. I said, well, you have to move six inches inward inside your brain and inside your heart to figure out what you're emotionally going to do next. Do you ever get to hang out in there with all the trees? No, I think it's Forbidden Zone. That's too bad, because everybody would want to be in there all the time. Shoot that, look at that. It's like the, it's like the set of the third man. With Orson <laughs> Welles, it's like Orson Welles can like pop out from behind the tree. You need some zither music. <laughs> so I'm with Josh Fox. He did the remarkable film Gasland, which really brought fracking as an issue to a lot more Americans than who would have thought about it otherwise, mm -hmm. and then a Gasland too. Right. And uh, now he's done a film on climate change, and he can tell you the title. Of it. The title is quite long. It's How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change. It's actually two yeah. titles bisected by the word love. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we are. Overpopulation. So, so we're going to talk about uh, Doesn't it a look movie just about like that, climate. that moment in uh, Clockwork Orange? Like the yes. big car? Oh, especially if you had like a fisheye lens, it would be... Uh, yeah. In the halls of great journalism. Oh, this is the Ebola. Oh my God, look at that picture. Can you talk about the, the transition from Gasland to climate? Yeah, sure. So obviously this film does very much pick up where Gasland 1 and Gasland 2 leave off in a right. way. Um, although there's some overlap, right? right? So we were making this film while we were also making Gasland 2. Uh, but it's a film about how you can win against fracking in your own backyard, which we did in the upper Delaware River Basin, and then realize that you could still lose everything to climate change. And that the localized battles on um, fracking and on all the issues um, are a piece of a much, much bigger struggle to get off of fossil fuels as a society. Because, I mean, it starts with this celebration, this victory dance, literally a victory dance, um, about winning in the Upper Delaware, which was a huge victory, right, for fractivists. Um, one of the first ones that we had in November 2011 that we actually beat the fracking industry and kept them out of the Delaware River Basin, New York City watershed. Well, um, and also it was part of the broader move that ended up with Cuomo saying yes, no to I, absolutely. throughout the state. Th so. That led to yeah. the New York ban two years right. later. Yeah. Um, but then I, I'm in my backyard, or actually my front yard, and there's a tree that I planted when I was five years old with my father because it was by the side of the road and I thought it was going to get hit by a car. It was like, a, you know, like about this tall. And I said, let's move it. And then I look at it. Um, and when you're in a crisis, you don't often look at what's around you. And all of a sudden the crisis lifted and I see my tree is dying. And it's dying of a, a parasite called the woolly adelgid, which is eating all of our hemlock forests from Virginia all the way up to Maine. And it's advancing steadily up the coast because of climate change. Um, and the same thing is happening to our forests in the West with the pine beetle because the, the winters are not cold enough to kill off the beetles. And, I, and, you know, hemlocks are the keystone species of our forests in the East. We don't know what our forests look like without hemlocks. Right. You know, we don't know what else is affected. Mushrooms will be affected. Plants and animals will be affected. Um, so, you, and, and then, quickly thereafter, you know, New York City gets hit by Hurricane Sandy. And... It's a one-two punch that says, you know, you can't stay home. You, even though I'm dying to like to stay home and enjoy and forget, leave this whole chapter of my life behind, um, I go back out on the road to look at climate change and quickly figure out that this is a movie I should have made 30 years ago. <laughs> because we're really far along in our problems with climate change right now, and that becomes the journey of the next section of the film. And so the film kind of has this moment where you're lying in the snow or something where... You know, every 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 hero's journey has the uh, right. has the crisis. This sort of, oh my God! It's the, uh, now, so was there a particular thing? I you know, I think I've told you that you know I recently wrote this piece about my thirty year journalistic mm -hmm. inquiry on climate and right. And there's a point when I there's certainly a point when I realized it's it, I, I used to think it was just a pollution problem. Then right. Like, just so you just pass a law, and then I used to think, well, okay, no, there's a technology problem here too. And then I realized there's a political problem. And then you realize there's a diplomacy problem because half the world doesn't have enough energy, and more than half. And then development it, problem. And so then it became real. You realize it is the mother of all problems. So yeah. so where was your? What made you? Was there some particular point when? I don't well, there was, was. There the was. It's a it's a it's a particular co a series of conversations where I felt that 
the climate movement and the fracking movement were on stage going, rah, 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 we're going to win, this is what we have to do. And then in private moments, we're saying things like, oh my God, we're totally screwed. Yeah. And there were a series of those, I won't reveal those conversations, which made me feel that there was a real problem here. Um, that going out and campaigning and saying we needed to just develop renewable energy was rather simplistic. And I had seen a lot of climate films which were so depressing that you felt like you just wanted to kill yourself and didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. And then I'd seen a few that were so overly simplistic. All we have to do is chase renewable energy. Right. And I felt like this was not justice to the topic because it wasn't the emotional weight of the catharsis. And I remember having a conversation with Tim DeChristopher where I said, you know, are we lying to ourselves? And he said, yeah, we are. We're going to have massive upheaval from climate change. It's going to be the in most intense period of change that human beings have ever negotiated on the planet. And that set me off in a totally different direction um, to figure out, well, how, how am I even going to make this movie? Because, you know, after figuring out Willie Adelgid and, the, and, the, and um, Hurricane Sandy hitting, I go to all the experts. I go to Bill McKibben. I go to Lester Brown. I go to uh, Elizabeth Col uh, Colbert. I go to uh, Van Jones. And I also interviewed Michael Mann and T Petra Schockert and all these incredible clients, more than that are just in the film. Right. And the information is so overwhelming that you realize it's a, you need an overhaul of every major human system from energy to politics to food to transportation um, to all the things that you mentioned, development, population. Mm -hmm. um, and that moment makes you want to seize up and tune out. So that's usually the moment we get to in a climate movie where everybody's like, and now you must act. And of course, it's the moment where you can't act because you just feel like completely like overwhelmed, and and that section is actually called overwhelmed. I say overwhelmed over and over again, yeah. and yeah, that mo one moment where it's a metaphorical shot, right, where I'm lying in the snow, and the camera goes from about six inches above my face, which is very intimate, to two thousand feet in the air, um, and then back down again, is a moment where I'm kind of in the stratosphere trying to figure out what to do next. And and you know, I come from the theater. Like my background is in the theater. I, I, um, People who watch the New York Times can look up many of my theater reviews from the 90s and the 2000s here at the, in New York City. Um, and so I believe in catharsis, and I believe in the power of emotional transformation. And, I, you know, like the Greeks did, and Arthur Miller did, and Shakespeare did. And so it's a cathartic moment in the film where I ask, well, if climate change is going to rearrange our coastlines, destroy a lot of our coastal cities, we're going to lose 30 to 50 percent of the species on the planet. If it's going to spread infectious diseases around the planet, create hundreds of millions of climate refugees, inspire wars, what are, these are the things that climate will destroy. What are the things that climate can't change can't destroy? You know, what are all the things climate can't change? And that made me look inside, right? A lot of people ask you, well, oh my God, climate change, where do I move? You know, <laughs> I don't want to move off the coastline. How far inland do I have to move? It was a question I got yesterday. I said, well, you have to move six inches inward inside your brain and inside your heart to figure out what you're emotionally going to do next. Um, you know, I think we're looking at a holocaust. We're looking at a, at a, a radical altering of human species. What do we have to become to get through that with any shred of human dignity? What do we have to become to be good to each other? Um, so the movie then becomes about virtues and it becomes about uh, civic uh, civic values. And uh, you know the things that climate can't change are courage, resilience, love, humanity, democracy, um, human rights, uh, you, you know, uh, innovation, creativity, right. community. And so these are a set of values that I think underscore so much of the climate movement, right? I'm not saying we shouldn't try to stop the fossil fuel industry. We have to stop right. the fossil fuel industry. We have to stop it fast because the worse we do with this, you know, the worse it gets, the faster it gets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ships that sink slowly have an opportunity to exercise values in how they go down and say women and children first and we're going to have an orderly progression and this is how it's going to work. Ships that sink quickly, yeah. it's total chaos and that's Mad Max version of Apocalypse. It's the most ruthless that survive. So I think the film starts to become about how do we re-engage as activists? How do we re-engage as civic participants? How do we redefine who we are right now knowing that these things are on the way? Right. This, well this gets to one of the, um, I think generally the environmental movement has been saying no so long that they, they don't know how to say <laughs> yes. So the question is, what do you say? What do you want? Well, uh, you know, we all know what you don't want. It's so interesting, Andy, because I put out 
these climate change interruptions, they're these short yeah. videos, and there's three of them. There's one on sea level rise, there's one on the Amazon, and there's one on renewable energy so far. The positive one about renewable energy has done the worst. Right. The one that's the doom and gloom and horrible right. about the Amazon with oil spills and graphic pictures, that one is skyrocketed. To welcome, point. welcome to dot earth. <laughs> right. Where, no, it's the same. No, it's, it's it, part of human nature. Well, by the way, this gets back to drama. Right. Where, yeah. You know, we are attracted to uh, the scary story by the fire, not the, right. not the hey, you know, we ha went out today and we got some rabbits. And well, the only happy stories that we have are comedies, which are, which are dreams deferred stories, right? The minute, it, 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 they're dreams deferred, I mean, right. they're, they're, they're about the chase. The minute the two people get married at the end of the comedy, the, mo the right. movie's over. Right. You know, you can watch two people chasing after each other for days on end. Right. Watching two people in a relationship together, turn it off. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 We don't want to know the happy ending. But, but truthfully about the climate, I think, what this film, though, uh, we've toured this film all over America. So we started at Sundance. We went on the road. Um, we did what was called the Leco and Love Tour. We went to 66 cities across America in three months. Manhattanville um, College in my yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Places that are specifically fighting the fossil fuel industry, right? So places, places that are fighting a pipeline or a fracking field or offshore drilling or onshore drilling or offshore fracking or onshore fracking or a huge frack gas power plant. I mean, the, 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 the sick thing right now is that the fossil fuel industry is actually expanding. Um, even as we know that climate change is coming. So we're fighting these fossil fuel infrastructure and expansion projects all across America. Seneca Lake, the gas storage facility, there are people getting arrested. So we're showing the film to help those struggles. Um, and at the beginning of the movie, there's this dance sequence. There's also one at the end of the movie, no spoiler alert. But at the end of every night, we go out and the film and the crew and whoever's there and the activists dance out with the credits. And we dance along with the credit sequence and everybody in the movie theater starts dancing. And it's the most cathartic eruption of re-energizing people. So it's not just positivity, right? We make this mistake. The negative information doesn't make us grief, uh, grieve and sad. It actually makes us numb. When we get depressed, depression is not an emotion. It's like the absence of emotions. When we allow ourselves to grieve, cathartically get upset and go through that emotion, that pain, and cry. And there's a lot of times when you cry during this movie. You open up. But it also opens the doorway to celebration and to love and to the happy emotions. I mean, all emotions are, are one wheel. Everyone in drama knows that. There's joy in every piece of sadness. There's some sadness in every bit of celebration. It's, I don't know why that's the case, mm -hmm. but it is. That's humans. We're weird. We have this one wheel of emotional engagement. So when we're emotionally engaging, Will Azizi cries would start dancing. And that's why this film is this kind of an emotional roller coaster. It is a, it is a, a trip down that kind of... Uh, it pulls all the heartstrings because you, if you, when you go into the jungle with those guys in the Amazon, in going 12 kilometers deep into the jungle, trying to just find the spill so they can right. report on it, and I go with them, or you battle with the Pacific climate warriors on the high seas in Australia with traditional hand carved canoes blockading coal ships that are bigger than this New York Times building, you know, it's emotional. It's insanely intense. It's more like an action adventure movie, you know, mm -hmm. than a climate change documentary, you know. Right. And so you go through these things, but what I'm trying to say to people is, don't be afraid of feeling. There's something on the other side of it. And that, on the other side, is love. That, on the other side, is in engaging with your community, engaging with people. Because what I want people to do is leave their house. You know? Right. You know you're on the right track in combating climate change if you've left your house. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting clicking things on your computer at home, mm -hmm. not good enough. You've well, got to go join your local group and get involved. Yeah. But we're saying, don't watch this movie alone. It's too scary. It's like Psycho, you know, don't watch it alone. And, and watch it with your friends and neighbors. So that we have a house party guide at our website, howtoletgomovie.com, where you can download it. And, it ha and at our website, you can connect to all your local groups, both national and local groups, right? So we have a, a map of 50 states. And in most states, there are local groups we can connect you with. And in every state, there are national groups we can connect you with. So the idea here is, and of course, this is a big political moment in America right now. This is a moment where I have never seen anything quite like what's happening in the streets right now. Um, and a lot of people know I'm officially a Bernie Sanders surrogate. That's separate from my work as a filmmaker. But I've been watching this incredible movement of people on the ground, or movements, coming together, right? fracking, climate, Black Lives Matter, LGBT, Occupy, yeah. Fight for 15, um, I don't know more, I could go on and on. Yeah. You know, there are movements in the streets right now in America, and that's a party. That's where life is at in America right now. So I, I'm suggesting to people, watch a movie with your friends and neighbors. Right. Invite them over, have some food, have a discussion afterwards. 
enjoy this as a community, as a family, and then sit and talk to each other about what we do next and when you're going to show up to your local group meeting. You know, it's like when Bernie Sanders called for people, 7,000 people, to, he called for people to run for local office. Yeah. 7,000 people called for local office. What yeah. run, is, are running now for local office? Right. What we're doing is we're calling out to people and saying, join your local climate initiative. And we would love to see thousands of people that week just show up at the offices of 350.org or at, uh, you know, uh, Citizens Climate Lobby or at your local organization that's mm -hmm. fighting a frack gas power plant or a pipeline or a fracking well, you're going to meet the best friends you've ever met in your mm -hmm. life. You're going to have the most rewarding conversations. Um, it's a life-changing event, and that's what we want climate change to change us for the better as humans, even as it changes the climate for the worse.